The goal of this video is to make you familiar with factor data structure. Make this your friend as this data structure will be used in all programming assignments. Let us look at the slide where factor uh, was defined by the professor. A factor is a function that takes a set of random variables x1 through xk as its arguments and maps for each possible assignment of the random variables to a value in set of real numbers. To understand this better, uh, let, let us look at the next slide. Um, here we have a, P, a joint distribution of the random variables i, d, and g, and this joint distribution is a factor. Here we have random variables i, d, and g. i can take two possible assignments, 0 or 1. d can take two possible assignments, 0 or 1. g can take two three possible assignments, one, two, and three. Now, you will notice that, uh, I'll show that in a, here in a while, uh, when we do our programming assignments, uh, instead of starting with zero, we'll start the assignments with one, two, or one, two, and three. So, let's now go back to, uh, so there is a file called factortutorial.m uh, when you unzip the programming assignment zip file. Uh, let's take a look at this and then I would like to relate that to uh, some of the uh, Actually, I would like to take some of this do some examples in octave uh, Hopefully that will uh, give a good understanding of the factor data structure So here we have a factor data structure defined like this. That's how you actually create So let's actually fire octave here and uh, start uh, putting that here So that's how it's a structure. Uh, I'll explain what each one is um, that's how you create a factor. It's a structure that has three things in it. One is a var for variables, card for cardinality, val for values. So what does this mean? So this three, so actually let's go ahead and type what it looks like. So as you can see, this structure, it's got uh, var equals three, one, two. Sta this actually stands for like x3. This stands for x1. And the last one is for um, x2. The cardinality, uh, so w what is this? So what this says is this variable x3 can take two possible assignments. This variable x1 can take two possible assignments. This variable x2 can take two possible assignments. Now uh, the table would look something like here, uh, right here I'm going to highlight it. So for each possible assignment for these variables, like here, 1, 1, 1. Now remember, we are not using 0. That's just a convention uh, that everything is starting here with 1. So 1, 1, 1 uh, maps to phi.val of 1. In this case, phi.val of 1 is actually 1. So you can actually type that, phi.val of 1. And you can see it returns 1. Um, so... Now, so the next assignment is 2, 1, 1, and uh, that is phi dot val 2, which will be an 1. The reason all these are 1s is, uh, see, if you look at the last uh, argument here, or the last piece here, it says 1s, 1 of 8. Basically, it creates um, a, a row vector with 8 uh, 1s. Um, now, the reason why we have 8 1s is because we have 8 rows here, right, uh, because the cardinality here is, 2, 2, 2, which is if you multiply all those, 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8, is 8 entries in this factor table. So for each possible assignment, you have this and a value. Now one thing to note, and it's really important to realize, is the, the notation or the convention that's followed here is the leftmost variable, in this case the x3 here, you see that, um, x3, alternates the fastest between its assignments meaning here one then immediately have two one two one two uh, the next one that alternates fast is the second one from the left which will be x1 in this case corresponding to this one here so you have one one two two one one two two and the slowest one will be the rightmost uh, uh, variable uh, that was defined so in this case, that will be x2. So you see how it alternates slowly, 1, 1, 1, 1, then 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. So if you have more number of uh, assignments, like 1, 2, 3, it is the same thing. So you'll have 1, 2, 3, then 1, 1, 1, 1, and, and you know, 2, 2, 2, 2, so like that. So but most importantly, the left one uh, alternates the fastest. Now, they've already provided you with uh, 
two helper functions here assignment to index and index to assignments um, it's really important to understand what these are and how this can help you um, actually there's a beautiful explanation actually this whole file has nice explanation so um, if you take this uh, example here assignment to index and I'll go through what these are so basically what this assignment to index will give you is if you have a assignment like here uh, like uh, 212 for example what is the index in this factor table so meaning which uh, what is the index of the row so this is row 1 row so you have row row 1 row 2 row 3 row 4 row 5 and row 6 so 212 is in row 6 so that's the index that's what the uh, 6 is the index um, and uh, so and what is this um, so the the a stands for the assignment which will be 212 in this case now what is this d d is the cardinality of the variables in this factor so which we already defined which is 222 two, two, right here so if you look at this function uh, example here you have assignment to index uh, so in this case we are trying to find out the index of the assignment 212 and basically we, in the last argument we are saying this factor uh, cardinality is uh, 222 two, two. it will actually help that method uh, get you the right index number so if I do this you get answer 6 now uh, how about um, I want to find out what is the index of the last one so 2222 two, two, two. so let's see so we change this to um, 2 and you see it's 8 the 8th row what about the second one so 2 1 1 so it's a second so that's the usefulness of this function so one good thing uh, with this uh, assignment index is it also uh, it just doesn't have to be one assignment it can take uh, um, it can take a matrix so what I mean by that I'll show you here so if you actually have so let's say I want to find out um, assignment so all the three ones that I just did in one shot so I would say 212 was one what we wanted to find out um, then we wanted to find out 222 and then we wanted to find out 211 so let's see what it does so as you can tell, so 212, just like how it gives 6, it gives you a column vector uh, with all the indices in, uh, in a vector form. This will actually help you vectorize um, um, wherever you need that. So I'll, I mean, uh, there's actually a tutorial by uh, the ML tutorial where it talks about Octave. Um, that, that's really a beautiful tutorial. You should really watch that so you get a better sense of vectorization and things like that. But yeah, so that's what so it not only takes just one assignment, it can take uh, multiple assignments like here and then return a column that the other useful method is index the assignment so what what does this do well it does basically the reverse of the uh, above operation so you give it the row number or the index of the uh, the row in the factor table and it'll actually give you what the assignment would be so let's uh, like uh, let's take a look at another example so index the assignment um, so here you're saying I want uh, index the assignment so for sixth row uh, what is the assignment for all these variables uh, it says 212 two. so if you look at 1 2 3 4 5 6 so that you get 212 two. Now, uh, just like how we did the vector, how we were able to pass multiple assignments, uh, we should be able to pass multiple indexes. So let's see, 682. So if I give 6, um, 8, and 2, uh, let's see what it does. So it actually gives you all the assignments. See, 212, 222, 211. So that's the usefulness of this helper. Right? It will really um, come very handy. Uh, now there are a couple of other uh, methods here one is get value of the assignment so okay uh, I have an assignment in that factor table that we've been talking about and I want to get the value of the assignment uh, 
one two one for example or uh, let's say two one two it will give you one now um, since we initialize everything to once uh, you will uh, actually uh, get all uh, as I type here you will get all outputs as one so let's try to change one of these values phi uh, dot val of one let's say call that as uh, some uh, something some real number and then let's say I change phi val of eight to some other real number all right so we have that now let's try to run uh, do the get value of the assignment um, so uh, 2 2 2 which is the last row um, in the table and you see you get 10 so that's the usefulness of get value of assignment same thing with the uh, set value of the assignment um, so you can take this um, So it says causes the value of phi x equal three to uh, uh, two to one to be set to six. So um, so again, there's a note here that clearly says um, note that MATLAB octave passes function arguments by value, not by reference. Um, meaning uh, the value is it copies the local stack um, as opposed to reference, which is like a pointer. Uh, set value of assignment does not modify the factors that you passed in. So that's the most important thing to remember. So let's see what this does. Uh, so set value of assignment uh, says, so you see it sets it to 6 here. So th that's what it is. Uh, so actually if you do this again and see get its value of the assignment, 2 to 2, uh, sorry, get the value of assignment 2 to 1. Let's see what it does. So 10, 2 to 1, is 6. So that's uh, all in a nutshell about uh, factor data structure. I highly recommend that you actually play with all these things right here as you do your programming assignments. And good luck. Thank you.